Hello, everyone. Welcome to another International Relations Capsule for the Shankar IAS Academy. We discussed today the visit to Moscow by the President of China, Xi Jinping, which happened just a couple of days ago. It all started off with a peace proposal made by China, several running into several paragraphs about how to end the conflict in Ukraine. But that document, it was very clear that there was no proposal for the end of the war. It was basically a listing of the principles in international relations and stating all these principles in the UN Charter and elsewhere and national practices and international practices should all be observed in dealing with such, such issues. So there was no meeting point there was no proposal for ceasefire. There was no proposal for uh, uh, any kind of negotiations, but a list of principles. This was obviously aimed at China getting into the act, into the issue, because so far China was merely abstaining on all the resolutions in the General Assembly and the Security Council. And uh, therefore, they felt that there was a little a space, strategic space for them to be active. And uh, when they saw the proposal, the Russians, President Putin welcomed it. He said, this is good as possible for discussion. It is positive. Some non-committal expressions were made of supporting the or considering the Chinese proposal. That gave some hope to everybody that maybe China will uh, uh, make an effort to mediate between the West and Russia, or at least make a call for ceasefire and negotiations jointly between Russia and China. That was the expectation. But it is the opposite that happened. What happened was after two days of discussion, Russia intensified the war and China supported Russia's core interests, as they call it. So what has happened during this visit is a further intensification of the relations between Russia and China. Formalized is, as it were, as a, the quote unquote, unlimited cooperation between the two countries. Of course, that agreement itself is not quoted in the joint statement, but every indication is that China is now joining the Russia, joining Russians in, uh, supporting their war in Ukraine. That's what really, really happened. There was a joint communique, which was very long, and uh, there are many points in it. But uh, none of these is really new, except that at every point there is a reference to the close relations between China and Russia, and the commonalities in their positions of resisting Western imperialism, uh, resisting American uh, influence in the Asia Pacific, criticism of the Quad. In so many ways, most of the discussions which is listed, which are listed in the uh, joint communique, build up to a special relationship between Russia and China. And this has an immediate impact on what India is trying to do this time. Because as chairman of G20, we have a role. We think we have a role. But that has also been a kind of counter by the China-Russia network. So there would have been a possibility if Chinese intentions were good, in spite of the fact that we are at loggerheads with China, there could be a peace meal between China and India because we had more or less identical positions about the votes. So if China wanted some serious effort, it could have tried, I don't know whether India would have joined, to have a joint move towards the solution of the problem. But obviously that was not even suggested because it was obviously an exercise in support of Russia rather than anything else. So the final result of the visit, I would summarize it as saying that it created a strategic space for China in the conflict. And at the same time, uh, India's possibility of intervening or uh, 
moderating or uh, mediating or whatever possibility was there as the chairman of G20 has also diminished. Uh, President Xi put considerable weight behind Putin. And Putin has not announced, even though Putin has not announced his candidature for presidency for the elections in 2024, Mr. Xi went out of his way uh, to declare that he supported Putin in the next elections and expressed the hope that uh, he will continue as president. And this is most inopportune for that when there is criticism for Putin inside Russia, of course, the Western world is very agitated about what he has done. And even the non-aligned world is not supporting him in any way in this war. And everybody knows that this war has to end. But at this point in time, to say not only that China and Russia have common interests, but also to wish Putin another term as president of Russia, was somewhat surprising. So with this new, neutral position that they were taking, and so now there is the support of a big power behind Russia's uh, invasion of Ukraine. And also this particular statement by China uh, also counters or opposes the initiative taken by the International Criminal Court which, as you know, has uh, indicted Putin and uh, has even ordered his arrest. Of course, it cannot be implemented because uh, China, Russia is not a part of the um, criminal court uh, statute. And so it is not apply applicable to them. But the International Criminal Court has summoned other heads of state from other countries. And so this is a, certainly a, a blow to Putin. And in that context, the Chinese president supporting him not only now, but also for the future, seemed a little bit different. Um, of course, there are many, many uh, positive signals in the document. Although it is not directed against, directed to in, towards any action as such. It talks about the UN Charter and international law. And then, of course, reference to legitimate security concerns of all countries, where, of course, you could say Ukraine is also included. Ukraine's legitimate security concerns should also be taken into account. But that is by implication, not directly. And, uh, of course, uh, block confrontation. Uh, they oppose, which, of course, is music to the ear of Russia. So, and after these discussions, Russia said that uh, the proposal was constructive, and it even said that Russia will be happy to have a Chinese uh, mediation. And uh, therefore, the, it can be easily uh, summarized, the result can be summarized as the peace plan arriving dead, in the sense there is no peace plan as such. It is basically a reiteration of the uh, friendship between Russia and China in this context. There were some, there were some reports that there would be a phone call that President Xi might telephone Zelensky. But as far as we know, that has not taken place. No announcement has been made. So in the sense that if at least he had spoken to him, there would have been some element of negotiation or persuasion. As I said, the latest uh, agreement of 2022, February 4, 22, has not been mentioned in the joint communique, but there was no need for it because we are reiterating the kind of co cooperation that the two countries are going to pursue. And some old agreements of June 21 uh, has been also uh, reiterated. And then some new language, there is talk about non-alignment for China and Russia. Non-aligned to whom? I don't know. And then non-confrontation, non-targeting of others. These are all uh, you know, truisms. Cannot be uh, you know, proved one way or the other. But there is clear indication that Russia was provoked to take action in Ukraine. And that message is very clear. 
In other words, there is considerable justification for Russian action in Ukraine spread all over this declaration. You cannot say that they are saying, yes, it was good for Russia to have attacked Ukraine. But from all the indications, you know, security concerns and um, non-alignment and non-targeting and non-confrontation, all this is, uh, is simply strengthening the position of, the, of Russia. Um, and of course, the General Assembly votes, Security Council vote, it has not been changed in any, may, any way, though not as not um, the thing has taken place, uh, no, change, no voting has taken place recently. Uh, but then China gave no indication of changing their position in the United Nations. And there is a curious reference to democratization of international relations. And also desire to, um, you know, to have a multipolar world. Multipolar world as also. So some of these phrases, which have not been seen in the Chinese or uh, Russian dictionaries, have suddenly come up in this. And so it says that Russia needs a stable uh, China, and China needs a stable Russia. NATO's effort to weaken Russia should be resisted. And also, very significantly, Russia and China will support the core concerns of each other. We know what those core concerns are. Immediately, there's Ukraine for uh, Russia, and China has several core interests coming up. There it is Taiwan, there it is Hong Kong, or there it is Xinjiang. All these are issues in which, which China has major core interests, and all of them are explosive situations. So it says China will support the core interests of Russia. And similarly, the core interests of uh, China will also be protected. And in other, in other words, their collaboration or alliance has been strengthened. So China certainly does not want uh, Russia to lose the Ukraine war. And they have criticized the West for all kinds of uh, activities. So the uh, whole situation, it looks that the future trajectory of the conflict may be affected by this. And there was clear evidence of that because after she left Moscow, there was an intensification of the war. A large number of missiles were sent, lots of people were killed. So this is the, this is the situation. So what, what kind of change is going to take place? Certainly it is not a neutral position. Certainly it is not a pro-Western position, not a pro-Ukraine position. And there is no solution suggested as to what the eventual settlement should be. So the security environment in the whole region and also Asia Pacific or India Pacific has also been disturbed by Rishi's visit. Because both of them repeatedly said, the joint statement stated, that there has been an attempt to destabilize Indo-Pacific. Of course, they don't use the phrase Indo-Pacific. They only use the phrase Asia-Pacific. And that is about China and Russia refer to Asia-Pacific, not Indo-Pacific. They think it was a, a wrong name given by the Americans. And uh, therefore, they don't use that. So Russia's dependence on China is sure to expand. Of course, there were rumors that China is going to supply arms to Russia in this context. Uh, but the Secretary of State of the United States has said that uh, that's not likely. Um, he said, Blinken said that uh, we do not expect that the Chinese will supply arms. Though there are rumors to that effect. And, the, uh, and for India, you know, this is a very, very difficult situation. The, the, the indications are uh, that uh, this will, in one way or the other, push India towards the West. Quad is likely to get more support from India and um, maybe a, a non-alliance of some kind will be formed. At least the activities will be strengthened, certainly. And the security considerations will become very, very prominent. 
So we could say that there is a kind of, kind of pincer movement in Europe between Russia and China. And Europe has to counter the, the new situation. So um, as far as Indo-Pacific is concerned, obviously Xi and Putin have a, are now a joint strategy to counter US efforts in Indo-Pacific, as they say. Particularly, they are referring to Quad. And also, uh, they said that uh, there is an effort to politicize multilateral groupings. Because they repeatedly say that some groupings have been politicized. Obviously, they're talking about Quad. They say we are all for regional groupings. But there should be no exclusive regional groupings. It should be inclusive. For example, there is a Russia, India, China grouping, because nobody hears about it these days. That is something that they would welcome. They say, why not? We can be together. And so they will, uh, and, and they are both in BRICS, for example. They said BRICS we can support. So wherever China is excluded or wherever Russia is excluded from these groupings, naturally they will object to that. And um, following that, there is an agreement on a large number of bilateral projects. And that's also important for uh, Russia because Russia needs this. And um, the projects worth about $165 billion is being contemplated very, in very many sectors, very crucial sectors like energy and others. And um, therefore, the, the, the political proximity between the two countries uh, is also supported by this uh, uh, projects which have been envisaged. I don't know how long it will come about, but there is an intention to intensify their uh, cooperation, international cooperation, economic cooperation, etc., which is very necessary for Russia at this time. That's such a very critical moment. So the result of this, what will be its implication for G20? Nothing new because uh, G20 foreign ministers have already gone back on the original proposal for uh, end of the conflict, etc. As mentioned in the Bali of declaration when Indonesia was chairman. Though Indonesia was the chairman, the Bali declaration was essentially drafted by India. And many of the statements of the Prime Minister of India have found a place in the uh, Bali declaration. And it was supported by Russia and as well as the United States and acknowledged that India had made a contribution. But what happened between Bali and uh, Delhi was the visit to Ukraine by President Biden. Because President Biden did not go there to seek a ceasefire or to negotiate. He went there to say that we are here to support Ukraine and to weaken Russia very clearly. And he outlined, outlined several things that uh, Russia can, I mean, uh, the um, many things that uh, can be done to uh, promote uh, Russia-China. And uh, Blinken was clearly against any ceasefire, because he said that if there is a ceasefire, what will happen is that Russia will try to uh, regroup and intensify the war. So the Quad is likely to get strengthened and uh, inclusive Asia-Pacific security system will be promoted. And Russia's, Russia welcomes China's willingness to play a positive role for the political and diplomatic settlement of the Ukraine crisis. They talk about a Ukraine crisis, they don't talk about a Ukraine war. They talk as though there is some kind of problem in Ukraine to be resolved, diplomatically and politically, to, de uh, to defuse the Ukraine crisis. They don't, they don't talk about a, a Russia-Ukraine war. So it is fairly negative from the Western point of view, fairly negative from even our own point of view. And uh, the changes in the, in the escalating international balance of power is quite visible. There's a big shift, because it started when Russia and China 
signed that agreement. But that has been now further strengthened and China is not initiating any peace moves. It has simply gone there to establish solidarity with Russia. And uh, if Ukraine is a core interest of Russia, China is bound to support it. So now we have to see what follows of the United Nations. Will China also uh, veto the resolutions against Russia? Or will they continue to abstain like India does? But India's position and China's position were always very distinct. Uh, one possibility was, since both of us were in Red Comas neutral, there was a possibility of our getting together a peace move. But the atmosphere is not good for that because we are not in the process of negotiating with China because we have major interests, we have major worries, concerns about the line of actual control. And also there is no, as uh, Foreign Minister Jay Shankar keeps saying, there is no basis for India-China relations. All the agreements which were reached in the past have been violated by China, and it's all a new ball game. So nobody is willing to now talk to China on the border or anything of that kind, and that is not the position. So, in a way, the situation has deteriorated from our perspective. It is moving towards Russia getting more support, which will be reflected in the Ukraine war. And after what President Biden has said, they, they will intensify. We also have heard that uh, uh, Poland is going to send uh, aircraft and missiles to Ukraine. So, an intensification of the war rather than peace that has happened. No peace has broken out in Ukraine, and the indications are that the war might intensify. That does not give any comfort to anybody, but it gives a lot of comfort to Russia because they have now the almost unconditional support of China uh, for the Russian war in Ukraine. This seems to be the result of uh, President Xi Jinping's visit. <music>